Debbie Friedman was a beloved friend of mine, um, and I miss her terribly. Um, I was privileged to do many women's seders with her, first in Los Angeles and then in New York for years. We did these massive women's seders, and they grew and grew and grew. Through Mayan, where I was privileged to work, um, we would have three or four nights of these women's seders before Pesach sold out with hundreds of people in the room. And I mean, I've, I was a backup singer for Debbie Friedman. That was way fun. And thanks to Barbara Dobkin's visionary leadership um, and an extraordinary group of women with whom I've been privileged to work over the years, we were able to welcome people into a Judaism that they had felt was beyond their reach. And I really feel that the women's seders that continue now with so much joy and amazing music written by Debbie and others, um, and the fact that Miriam's Cup is no longer an oddity but is a fixture at so many seder tables. And we seder is often called the most um, practiced Jewish ritual um, because the table needs to keep expanding. And it does keep expanding. And sometimes it contracts, and then it expands again. And we have folks, Jews and non-Jews, who come to the Seder table who are transformed year after year by the power of this image of freedom. And it's, we don't have the, um, this is not an exclusive for us at all. But the universality of this message and the particularity of our expression of it is something that, of course, I mean, I feel so blessed to have been able to help create and produce many women satyrs and also to work on a Haggadah that I hoped would bring some of that energy and excitement and innovation and joy to tables across the world.